As a tech enthusiast, there's probably a chance that you can recognize this phone from a mile away just by looking at the camera module on the back here. It really gives the phone a unique and distinctive look, similar to what Apple's had for the last couple years. But for those of you who have no clue what this device actually is, it is the Pixel 9 from Google, the latest flagship device in their lineup, or at least that's what they're trying to pass it off for with this overall unique premium fit and finish and a cohesive end-to-end -end unique look and feel. But it's not the typical flagship experience that Android users have really come to expect over the last few years. So let's get to it. This is my review of Google's Pixel 9. And as always, feel free to jump into the comments and let me know what you think of this latest device. Honestly, from what I've seen so far, there are a lot of different opinions and a lot of people don't seem to like it. For full disclosure, this is a review unit straight from Google. I've been using Pixel devices for quite a few years now and actually purchasing Pixel Pro units since the original Pixel 6 Pro. For me, the main appeal has always been the overall camera and software experience on these devices. And the Tensor chipset though, inside this device may actually be the one thing that's keeping me from buying a Pixel 9 this year. I'm definitely gonna be touching on the performance issues on this device, but first let's start with the design, which I think is one of the main things going for this phone. Honestly, it's absolutely gorgeous. Out of the four color options, I really wanted to get my hands on the winter green, but I was given the porcelain white, which isn't the worst in the lineup with the contrast between the frosted metal frame and the camera module on the back gives it kind of a refined look, but the green and the pink options are definitely a lot more playful. If you want the no frills business look, Google also has the obsidian black option, but honestly, where's the fun in that? When compared to last year's model though, it looks like the Pixel design team took a little bit of inspiration and cues from the latest iPhone, increasing the thickness of the metal frame, flattening out the edges, and rounding off the corners just a little bit more. I guess the easiest way to describe the overall fit and finish of this device is that it's just a little less bubbly than last year's phone. It's not a dramatic design shift, but I do think that if anyone's gonna be complaining about Pixel's new look are only those people that really have an issue with companies copying some design cues from year to year. But there is a benefit to having a flat glass back on the phone. If you happen to drop the device, the impact will be absorbed by the thicker metal frame rather than the glass itself. And also, this plays into Google's claim that the phone is twice as durable as the Pixel 8. And then there's the other upgrade of using Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the back, making it more resistant to scratches and cracks. I haven't dropped the phone yet to test this out, but I probably will sooner or later since I have one of those crazy people that likes to go case free. But it's nice to know that the phone is gonna be more durable this time around. And for those of you who do like cases, one thing I do like is that this year there seem to be a lot of options, even right out of the gate. It helps that Google keeps gaining more and more market share, but I think that for the fact that the Pixel 9 and the Pixel 9 Pro share sizes, the phones essentially on the outside are identical. It's nice to see that a lot of other manufacturers are stepping into the ring. I'm really happy that Pitaka is finally making cases for the Pixel 9 series this year, but also there's other options from Mouse, Spigen, and others who have included cases that actually have MagSafe support as well, since Google didn't bother with adding Qi2 support to the device this year. Overall, I have to say I do like the new look. It feels a little bit more refined than last year's device. And for being a small Android phone, I'm a little bit disappointed though that the display did have to grow from 6.2 inches to 6.3 inches, though it's still significantly smaller than the larger Pixel 9 Pro XL and quite a few other larger Android devices that are around these years. For those of you who were looking for a display upgrade, you actually get a pretty significant one this year. And it's not just that 0.1 inches, you actually get a panel that's 35% brighter than last year's with HDR support up to 1800 nits, 2700 nits of peak brightness, which is absolutely incredible if you're looking to use the phone outdoors. It's not as quite as bright as what you get with the Pixel 9 Pro series, but it's definitely a lot better. And just like the back of the phone, you actually get Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the front, making it again, more scratch and crack resistant this time around. It does have a 120 hertz refresh rate, but unfortunately it's still using a 1080p OLED panel. If you want an adaptive LTPO display, you are gonna have to splurge on the more expensive Pixel 9 Pro series, but honestly, I have no complaints with this. The viewing angles and the color reproduction are absolutely phenomenal. 
What I do have issues though is the phone's performance or just lack thereof. And no, I'm not talking about any glaring issues like overheating or poor cellular connectivity like we've seen on previous Pixel devices. It honestly just comes down to raw power, which this phone is seriously lacking. So is it faster than last year's devices that were running the Tensor G3 chips? The answer, is yes, but you will have to look really, really close in order to notice those differences. And even if you're running benchmarks, you'll have a hard time showing them with improvements ranging between three to just 10%, if that. And let's not forget that last year's G3 chip was incredibly slow when compared to the competition. And that was a mediocre upgrade from the previous generation, the G2. So to put that all into perspective, the brand new Pixel 9 from Google with its new G4 chipset is about 5% slower than the Samsung Galaxy S22 with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. That's a two and a half year old phone. Simply unacceptable if you're looking for a phone for gaming or we're hoping for a better performance when playing graphic intensive games like Genshin Impact or Warzone. It'll still play those games, don't get me wrong, but you'll definitely have a much smoother experience on practically any other Android smartphone that's been on the market for the last two and a half years. And that's just not good. But there is a little bit of a silver lining here with this new device, with the new chipset being optimized more for regular day-to-day -day tasks rather than performance in gaming. Google says that it launches applications 17% faster and web browsing is 20% faster as well. And those numbers though, are a little bit harder to verify, but with side-by-side -side comparisons that I've done between the Pixel 8 and the newer Pixel 9, I have noticed that the Pixel 9 is definitely faster. And then there's also the improvement when it comes to efficiency for battery life. I did notice this immediately on day one when I started using the phone, but most importantly, when I was doing my camera comparisons between the two devices, starting off with a full charge on both phones. And then at the end of the day, the Pixel 9 had a good 10% more battery life than the Pixel 8. And this phone here was the one with a SIM card in it, the other one did not. And I was doing all of my regular day-to-day -day stuff on the Pixel 9 as well. And even under heavy use as my regular daily driver, I still haven't managed to kill the Pixel 9 on a regular day, which typically means about 15 to 16 hours unplugged with about six to eight hours of screen on time. And usually I still have a good 20 to 25% charge left. And the battery on this phone though, did get a little bit of a bump from 4,575 milliamps to 4,700, but the improvement in efficiency in the chipset is arguably a lot better, especially with those network improvements, overall giving you a really good optimized battery experience on this device. When it comes to charging, this phone is limited to 27 watts of charging speed, which Google claims delivers a 70% charge in 30 minutes, but in my testing, it was about 70% in 40 minutes, going all the way to 100 in 90 minutes. And I know a lot of people really don't care about this, but I would really like Google, Apple, and even Samsung to give us phones that charge in less than an hour. And honestly, it's not asking for much since I have more than a dozen phones within arm's reach here that can go from zero to 100% in about 30. So getting that to an hour shouldn't be an issue. I mean, come on. I know the topic of artificial intelligence is a little bit overdone these days, but I do need to talk about it quite a bit because Google's built it into every nook and cranny on this smartphone. It's honestly pretty amazing, both with on the cloud and on device AI. That same Tensor G4 chipset, which is honestly a huge disappointment when it comes to gaming, is actually an industry leader when it comes to on device AI with 45 tokens per second, which is double or more than double than 20 tokens per second that you get on Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And just think about it this way, Google thinks you should be doing more AI on your smartphone than you should be gaming. Now, I'm not gonna cover every AI feature that's built into this phone because that would easily turn into a 30 minute video. But if you wanna see an in-depth look on what this device can do, let me know and I'll try to put something together. So just leave a comment below. But let's start things off with Gemini Live because this is probably one of the most impressive and yet most gimmicky feature out of all of them. What's something cool we can do together? All right, let's hear it. What kind of things are you interested in? I'm interested in the latest tech. Can you tell me a little bit about the brand new Pixel 9 from Google? So the Pixel 9 is Google's newest phone, and it's pretty awesome. It's their first phone to come with their new AI chip, 
which makes everything from taking pictures to just using your phone in general a lot smoother. People are especially excited about the camera. It takes amazing photos, even in low light. Is there anything in particular you'd like to know about it? What do you think about the Pixel 9 or the Pixel 9 Pro XL? Which one is better? Absolutely. The Pixel 9 and 9 Pro are both great phones with a lot to offer. The biggest difference comes down to a few things. Screen size, battery life, and camera features. The Pro has a bigger screen, a higher resolution, and a longer lasting battery. It's also got a few extra camera features, like a telephoto lens for zooming in. So if you want the absolute best of the best, the Pro might be the way to go. But honestly, the regular Pixel 9 is still an amazing phone, and you might find that the smaller size and lower price are worth it. You can have a conversation back and forth with Gemini, making the AI interaction feel just a little bit more natural. And having different voices to choose from is always nice. All of this though does run in the cloud and Gemini Live isn't free on the Pixel 9 since it's bundled into Google's Gemini Advanced subscription which costs $20 a month. But if you do buy Google's Pixel 9 Pro or the 9 Pro XL, you do get this for free for 12 months. So something to consider if you wanna go with that more expensive device. Google Photos does have two new features that are built into Magic Eraser called Reimagine As and Auto Frame. The latter reframes or realigns your shots with AI by generating areas of the image that simply weren't there yet once you realign the image. You can even add in a foot or a shoe into the shot that just wasn't there before if it was cut off by the shot. It won't be the shoe that you were actually wearing, but I guess that's okay. The reimagine as feature though is where your creativity actually comes into play. Just tap an area of the photo that you wanna reimagine or circle it with your finger and then change the sky to a beautiful sunset or even swap it out for a completely different background. If you wanna add flowers to your yard, you can do that too. Or even add an alien spaceship to the sky. But just like a lot of other generative AI features on devices like this or in the cloud, you do need to put a little bit of extra work in here just to make sure you're getting the results that you want. And then there's the new Pixel Weather app. I personally love the design of the app itself, but Google's added new artificial intelligence with its weather summary right at the top, which will give you a quick overview of the weather that's gonna be coming throughout the day. And if honestly, you don't really care about the artificial intelligence features of the app, it really doesn't matter because the app itself is so good. And my favorite feature is actually the interactive weather map with precipitation forecasts that allow you to play out the forecast over the next day or so, even allowing you to zoom zoom out completely on the map, giving you a full look of what the weather is gonna to be today. And then there's a new Google Screenshots app, which is a centralized repository for all the screenshots that you capture on your device, which uses artificial intelligence sprinkled on top to give you a little bit more functionality. The AI captures all of the text and even the URLs from web pages that the screenshots were captured on, allowing you to organize things later on by grouping them, but also gives you a direct link back to a product page if that's what you took a screenshot of, or you can search for the price of the shoes that you're looking at. It's honestly incredibly simple in allowing you to just jump back to the content that you were looking at without having to do an additional search later on, though it probably would have been nice to build it into Google Photos rather than having a separate app on the phone. And then finally, there's the Pixel Studio app, which is an AI image generator and editor. And I love how it has a collection of pre-designed images that you can just use as a jumping off point with predetermined prompts, giving the average user a good place to start. But you also have editing tools so that you can tweak the images after the fact, just to make sure that it's more in line with what you wanted. It essentially takes the Pixel AI generated wallpaper application to the next level, giving you a lot more control since you can actually write your own prompt from scratch. And I swear, that's gonna do it for this AI highlight, and there's so much more to talk about, but we do need to move on to the cameras on the Pixel 9, because I do think they are a pretty significant upgrade over last year's device, because we have two cameras here that match spec for spec what we get on the Pixel 9 Pro. The only difference is that we have omitted the 5X 48 megapixel telephoto camera on the back, but that means the ultra wide camera is the same 48 megapixel sensor that we got on last year's devices, the Pixel 8 Pro, 
and the new 9 Pro series, as opposed to the 12 megapixel sensor on the previous regular Pixel 8. Google even claims that it's rebuilt its HDR image stack from the ground up this year, improving the overall image quality and reducing color tone shift between the two cameras on the back of the phone, which is incredibly noticeable. Now, it's no secret that Pixel devices don't have the largest or even the best image sensors that are out there for smartphones. If you want something like that, you should definitely check out the latest Vivo or Oppo devices, which have some incredible camera hardware. But the Pixel devices have always been incredibly consistent, and I find that to be the same with the Pixel 9. It's not gonna produce the best shot possible, but it is on par with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Galaxy S24 Ultra in most situations, and definitely comes out on top when compared to those two, in low light image capture. And as I mentioned before, one of the main reasons that I've been using Pixel devices as my main daily drivers for the last two to three years is because of the cameras. The only downside is that this isn't the best camera experience that you can get on a Pixel. The 9 Pro does have that added 5X telephoto camera on the back and a better selfie camera as well. This one's still using that same 10.5 megapixel sensor that we've seen for the last couple of years on the regular Pixel devices, but it has been upgraded with phase detect autofocus. But after looking at the selfies, I absolutely have no complaints. And honestly, side by side, it takes better selfies than the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is a device that costs $500 more. And everyone that I've shown the pictures to seem to agree that the Pixel 9 is the better choice. The only downside here is video capture with that selfie camera. From the rear cameras, you have some incredible results, but you do have some skin tone issues when capturing in very bright lighting conditions on this device. But though, if you do compare it to other devices within the $800 category, it does fairly well. Yeah, Will. He's good, make him his goal. Of course, Google did build in some AI features directly into the camera app itself with the new Add Me feature. I'm not sure yet if this is actually useful in the real world or if it's just a gimmick, but we'll just have to see over time. If you wanna take a group shot and don't wanna capture a selfie or don't have a tripod that's with you, you can use the Add Me feature within the camera and then line up the shot the first time, leaving room for yourself and then handing off the phone to somebody else to snap a second shot. It does give you some pretty decent results as it meshes the two images together. The composite shot does look a little bit unnatural if the lighting conditions aren't really great. But honestly, if you're not looking too close, these images are perfectly passable for social media. And yes, you can get pretty creative if you want to creating body doubles of you and the other people in the shot. It just comes down to how much time you wanna spend using it. After about two weeks with the phone, I have to say I'm still kind of on the fence about the Pixel 9. I absolutely love the design and the camera performance is really, really good. But if you are looking for a phone that does have incredible performance and you spend more than an hour or two gaming per day, I have to admit there are, there are other devices on the market that will do a better job. Namely, the OnePlus 12 is a great competitor to this device. But if real world multitasking is the limit of what you actually need to do and don't have gaming as a priority, the Pixel 9 should do the job just fine. And the battery life, I have to say, is a huge improvement over last year's device. If you were looking at a Pixel 8 and simply decided not to buy that phone because battery performance was subpar, you'll definitely be happy with the Pixel 9. Personally, if I was gonna buy a Pixel smartphone this year, I wouldn't be buying the Pixel 9. I'd splurge a little bit and buy the 9 Pro because it's the same exact size as this with that added telephoto camera on the back and slightly better thermals as well, so you might eke out a little bit better performance. And that's gonna do it. Let me know what you think of the Pixel 9 in the comments and whether or not you're gonna be buying it this year. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.